So we are looking here at the question, right, of, of what I have called quantity versus quality. Um, and I think that the reason why these two visions of the world are opposed to one another, offered as alternatives in this novel, um, is because what Alyosha, excuse me, what Ivan is struggling up against um, is a question of quantity. And the question of quantity is, there is so much suffering in the world, right? Um, and if, let's say, we had some sort of system where if for every, you know, moment of untold suffering, of unanswered uh, suffering, of, of, you know, suffering without reason, without cause, um, we needed to imagine some correspondent uh, thing that God did right, to uh, make up for it, to make it right, uh, then we would be engaged in like this sort of endless, um, you know, meaningless expanse of just constantly trying to balance the ledger book, constantly trying to say, well, this thing went terribly wrong. So what are we going to do to make that right? What are we going to do to make that right? And so forth and so on and so forth. Um, and this problem of quantity is kind of the human problem. And that's how Ivan presents it. He says, I can see how in infinity this might be resolved. Um, how parallel lines might meet in non-Euclidean space. Um, but here, right, I have my Euclidean mind, and I'm just, all I can see is just the mass, the amount of suffering. Um, and, you know, C.S. Lewis has an interesting answer to this in The Problem of Pain, where he says, actually, like, nobody, nobody experiences the suffering uh, of everybody cumulatively. They just experience the one suffering that they have. Um, and I think this is a way into Zosima's answer here, which is that, actually, right, we, we don't just exist as big expanses of stuff. We have form as well as matter, quality as well as quantity, right? And, and so really the way to look at this sort of thing is not to say, well, there was this problem and this problem and this problem, but to say the whole world is in a state of, of sorrow, right? And you are implicated in it both by way of guilt and by way of need, right? You are both suffering and you are guilty for the suffering and not in the sense that you did something bad or wrong, but rather that you are tied up in this cycle, right, of, of recrimination. And if you atomize yourself to the extent that you have to be answerable for the things that you have done, right, um, then you will find yourself just kind of constantly trying to claw your way out of this hole, right? But if instead what you say is that, you know, the things that you have done implicate you in this huge tapestry of human sorrow and suffering, um, and that tapestry as one has a certain character, right? That's cosmic man, which is answered by cosmic Christ who suffers along with us, right? Who enters into that suffering um, and bears our sorrows upon himself. Um, and looking at the world that way won't make things better, right? Won't get, make the sorrow go away, but it will be productive of the faith that allows you to believe in the post-Euclidean world, right? The world beyond this time of kind of like sorrow and pain and all the things that we do suffer underneath, right? Dostoevsky's looking for an answer to that that's not going to deny it or wish it away, as I often say on this podcast, right? It's no use indulging in happy talk. Um, we just need to uh, instead kind of delve more deeply um, into this, uh, into this complete vision of the world, right? Uh, that can take on sorrow and even then answer it with joy. Um, and this is why the stench is important, right? The fact that Father Zosima starts to smell bad, that he does die, um, that he is a man, right? Um, and that we, whatever we get is going to have to come through us. Whatever consolation we get is going to have to come to us through this fleshly broken world that we're in, right? Um, that is Dostoevsky's answer to both the desire for miracles and the problem of pain, right? It's that it's not that, you know, there isn't all this sorrow. It's that by looking at the sorrow as part of a vast tapestry of brokenness, right? The br brokenness of the world, you begin to see how the sorrow can be the beginning of joy, right? And that's what Zosima says in that dream that I read at the end there, right? That this is just the beginning, you know, that, that we, we sorrowed on earth and now we have begun a great and new joy because we gave an onion, right? Because we did one thing that looked at the world as if it were redeemable, right? We did, we had one action, one part of our lives, some small seed of that mind shift that allows you to uh, be redeemed, right? To, to, uh, to live through and even uh, take, take consolation in the midst of all your own sorrow and, and suffering.